before I dive into My Hero Academia chapter 325, which was amazing, I have just one question. Who is she? I mean, we've seen her for multiple chapters now. She doesn't know how to address Deku. Deku doesn't know how to address her. And I just want to name Horikoshi. I mean, I don't know exactly what type of creature she is. I mean, I think in recaps, I've seen her just be called the mutant lady or woman. Just give us something to call her Horikoshi. I know not everyone in the story has to have a name, but at this point, I feel like there's almost going to be some kind of big reveal with their name. Is it possibly Togen Disguise? I don't know what, but I feel like by not knowing her name at this point, there might be some kind of realization around it. I have no idea what to expect about it, but I want to know who she is. So hopefully we're going to get that chapter 326, but that does not take away from how awesome this chapter was. My name is Andrew Nimsger, and today I'm going to be breaking down everything that happened in chapter 325 of My Hero Academia, titled The Bonds of One for All. If you do enjoy this video or are looking for other My Hero Academia content, make sure to go over to youtube.com slash class1a to find all of our other My Hero Academia content, which includes NRA recaps, vigilantes recaps, and so much more. So let's not waste too much time at the front of the video and jump right into the recap. The chapter starts off with Ida holding back Mineta as Koda and the Mutant Women one up to Deku. Koda apologized for being so scared and not running up to him earlier, but after what Ochako said, he knew he had to come. He tells Deku that he doesn't need to cry anymore and that he is here, and the woman picks up Deku and tells him that she is so grateful for arresting her and sending her to Yue because so many shelters would not take her in and all three of them kind of hugged. A civilian, actually a man we saw called Deku a fanboy all the way back in chapter one of My Hero Academia is here at Yue, stepped up and said that everyone should hear Deku out and really the heroes as a whole. He reminds the crowd that he only wants to stay before going back and fighting, and Nezu confirms that when most of the civilians kind of look towards him, and the idea of sending him to Shiketsu does come up, but another civilian just kind of pipes up saying, well, the same thing's probably going to happen there, and without Ochako there, this probably never would have happened with the civilians coming around and had to be wanting to support Deku. The man continues on saying that he never really realized how much civilians were a spectator almost in the world compared to the heroes performed on a metaphorical stage. All might pave the way for so many other heroes, but with all that, all the spectators forgot the heart and soul that made All Might and a lot of the other heroes. And pretty much the only heroes that are left actually fighting can't be in it for the glory because there isn't any. There is no more stage. So the heroes that are left are the ones that actually want to fix anything. So if all the civilians turn their back on them, who else is going to be able to help them? The vocal boy that we've seen for a couple chapters that had kind of been very against Deku coming in mentioned that he's heard about a man in rags with multiple quirks that was either a villain or a true hero. He asked Deku that if Deku stays at Yue, can he give all the civilians back their lives? Deku looks up and confidently says that now that everyone is with me, we can bring it back, which is such an awesome moment. God, outside of Yue, Ectoplasm asks Endeavor, Hawks, and Shoto if he hears Ochako's speech. Endeavor isn't very happy about it, saying that all we did was really push a burden onto Deku and made no progress, but Hawks completely disagrees. Hawk says that one for all is a power that links people's hearts together, and now everyone at UA is connected. All Might connected to Deku, Deku connected to his classmates, and Oshako connected Deku to all the civilians of UA, and because of this, the future is looking so bright, and it's going to be one where heroes are going to have time to kill, which is what we know is pretty much what Hawks wants more than anything else in the world. Right after that conversation, Shoto looks at Endeavor, saying that we have to do this together while thinking back to Toya's face, and Endeavor agrees. Then, I don't know if it's a little bit of a time jump or a scene jump, I should say. We see Nezu talk to his Iwa, who is currently in the hospital, and is confirmed to be missing his right eye and his right leg, which is now a prosthetic, saying that he's not going to be in the next miracle, but that he's doing better. Nezu says that his class is doing great and fills him in that Kyogure has been moved to Central Hospital for restorative research. There's been no really major breakthroughs yet, but seeing that they got this far because Oboro regained his consciousness for even a second within Kiragiri, but there is hope for possibly more to come out. And the chapter kind of ends up with Aizawa asking about countermeasures to Toga, which is a very good question. And Nezu responded that we pretty much figured out how long she can transform based on how much blood she can take in. And they just hold a vac ease for a certain amount of time to make sure that if they were Toga, they just transform and she'd be caught. Aizawa declares that now that UA is a stronghold, it is time for their revenge. And the chapter finishes up with All Might standing outside of UA with his back facing away from UA, looking very sudden, sullen, kind of maybe walking away or just not feeling the vibe of what's going on right now. So a couple really interesting things here that I want to pull out. Obviously, it's great to kind of get an update on Aizawa. 
And even though he has lost his eye and his arm, that he's doing all right is such a great thing. I feel like it's been a while since we really had an update on Aizawa. But the really interesting part from that conversation at the end of the chapter was the idea of Kurogiri slash Obro being more part of the story going forward. So they brought him to the central hospital in this restorative research. So maybe trying to find a way to really pull out Obero's consciousness, which could possibly be a huge kind of side change for the heroes. I mean, if all of a sudden they had Kurogiri's powers on their side and being able to transform all around would be a huge win for the heroes and making fighting against all for one so much more possible. Maybe even getting more information out of Kurogiri about where all for one could be or what their plan to might have, or overall, just having Obero back, even if it was in a different form, fighting alongside Aizawa and Mike would be such an awesome moment. And another one, going back to kind of the lady I was talking about at the beginning, the mutant lady, I don't think she's actually Toga. I think it'd be a fun reveal, but I do want an update on where Toga is. Pretty much just confirmed that there's no chance that she's in UA is kind of what I think the statement at the end was saying. Maybe they're underestimating her power and she did find a way to be able to extend how long she can be transformed and it's actually inside of UA, but I don't believe that's the case. But I want to know where she's at. She's not with the League of Villains right now. She kind of had that conversation with Froppy and Uraka and then left. We don't know where she's at and I love Toga in the story. So I don't know if it's going to be a complete side change. But it's going to be one of those people that I feel like is going to have a major impact on the story still, but we don't have any update on where she is. Another character that I really feel like is going to be coming into play soon, and probably my last point before I wrap up here, is what is Stain doing? And why did we see him for one chapter kind of looking at Deku and All Might and then have not seen him since? I really feel like he's going to come back in and almost have a conversation with All Might. I originally thought it was going to be Deku trying to rescue Deku from this dark path that is going down, but I feel like, seeing based on the last scene in this chapter, that All Might is kind of on the outs with everyone else for whatever reason, not understanding exactly why, maybe still a little hurt by what Deku did, kind of leaving him behind. So Stain coming in, maybe having a conversation with All Might, which seems out of place, but I just don't know what Stain has to do in the story yet. But another character very similar to Toga that when they do come in is going to be a major moment in the series and going to be some kind of turning point for a character or multiple characters. Chapter 325 as a whole was amazing. So many cool moments, seeing Hawk, seeing Endeavor and Choto pretty much sparking back up that conversation like, hey, let's go get Toya. There are going to be so many awesome moments coming up for the rest of the series. So I cannot wait to see what they are. I hope you all enjoy this recap as much as I enjoy this chapter. And I will be back next Sunday for chapter 326 of My Hero Academia, breaking down everything that happened. Have a great day and see you all then.